Hurricanes. What's a hurricane? A hurricane is like a big cloud of water in the ocean destroying everything. Okay, yeah. What is a hurricane though that's happened near us in the last few years? You hear talk of a lot. Maya? Katrina. Katrina, that was a big one. Okay, remember the hurricane wasn't really the problem, it was when the levees, the water, the flooding that happened broke the levees and it flooded the town. Okay, what's another one? Volcanoes. Volcanoes. We're going to talk more about volcanoes today. We don't have many volcanoes around here, do we? It's in Hawaii. It, it, there are a lot in Hawaii. And one but, erupted before. Yep. I bet you didn't know this, that um, in Jackson, and you know where the big Coliseum is in Jackson? Mm -hmm. Where they have concerts and stuff? Mm -hmm. Underneath the Coliseum is an old dormant volcano. Dormant means it's dead. It doesn't erupt anymore. But there was a volcano in Jackson. There was. What is another natural disaster? Dylan. Tornadoes. Now, tornadoes we see a lot of, don't we? Mm -hmm. I remember a couple years ago there was a real bad one here. Yeah, it, you see, that's what a natural disaster does a lot of damage. It causes a lot of destruction. Let's think of one more natural disaster. Yeah. Tsunamis. Tsunamis. Good. Where was the tsunami that was that made the news? Was it in Japan or China? It was in Japan. Now, a tsunami is, it starts with an earthquake under the, in the ocean, under the water. And the, that earthquake causes this wave. It's not very big in the ocean, but then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it comes closer to shore. And that's what the tsunami is, that big wave that makes it to um, land and it causes all the destruction. So yeah, good. Those are, that's just a few of some of the natural disasters that uh, we're going to talk about this week. All right, y'all turn in your small book to page 46. Page 46. Someone tell me what's happening on page 46. Tristan? There's a fire in the hillside. Okay, there's a fire. Is a fire a type of natural disaster? Yes. So let's add that to our list. A wildfire. What's that helicopter doing, Gay? Um, it looks like it's saving somebody because it had a rope over there. Okay, it could be saving somebody. There could be somebody trapped in the fire and can't get out. The helicopter could be saving somebody. What else could that helicopter be doing, John David? It could be... Okay, so 
So for the tsunami in Japan, her church helped raise money, and that's a long way away. But does our money help them? Yes. Yes, it helps them a lot. Well, something else, and it, it, you don't have to have done it. What's something that you could do that if you have an idea about or something you have done? Akira. Like it, like it from Earth. Like happens, you could like go to other people and check and see if they're okay. Okay, you can check to see if people are okay. We'll put check on people. What's something else, John Carter? If a, if a <coughs> hurricane happened and it destroyed somebody's house. And that happened a lot here. Um, when Hurricane Katrina happened, a lot of people came north. Actually, a really good friend of mine that lives in Enterprise and graduated from here is from New Orleans, and he came and lived here after Hurricane Katrina. So yes, you can take people in, family or friends. What's something else you could do? Let's see. Let's take a okay. When the tornado came through Enterprise a couple years ago, what was some what were some things that people did to help each other out around here? Kaylee. If somebody was like under something, they could have got stuff off of them. Okay. Like we'll if there was with... stuff in there, um, we, what is it called in your house underground? Basement. Mm -hmm. The cellar? Yeah. The cellar? Okay. Yeah. We'll put that and check on people. What are some things that you can collect or get for people if they need it? Yeah. Yeah, you can pick up trash because the natural disasters make a big mess. So you can help clean up. What are people going to need if they're in a natural disaster? What do people need? Okay. Food. They need food. And water. Food and water. So what are some things that we could do to get them food and water? Mm -hmm. Things that we can do to get them food and water. Y'all probably have done this before. Donate time, you can donate money, donate clothes. Alright, that's enough for this. Y'all put your hands down. These are good ways that a community can pull together and help when a natural disaster happens. And these are all things that y'all have done. Okay? Alright, let's look at. I've got something interesting for y'all. Since we're talking about natural disasters, these, I wouldn't call them natural disasters, but they're kind of funny. All right, we're going to read an informational text. Someone tell me what an informational text is. Akira. An informational text, like an informs you on facts? It, that's right. It informs you. It gives information. It provides facts. Well, sometimes informational text can be a little difficult to read because it is so much information. So what a lot of informational texts do, or they, they provide you text features. And those are things in, within the writing that help you follow what you're reading. So everyone turn to page 50, to a world of change. We're going to read this in just a minute, but first I want you to flip through the few pages of the story and tell me what you see there that is not in stories like Princess and the Pizza or Experts. Dylan. Huh? Okay, pictures. That's a good. That's a good thing. What is the difference in the pictures in this story and the pictures in Princess and the Pizza? 
What's the difference? Tristan? It is not like cartoons. Exactly. It's real life. It's real life. These it are photographs. True. People took these pictures. It's not drawn. Now, sometimes informational texts will have drawn pictures, but for the most part, they're going to be photographs, photographs taken. Yes. What's something else that's different? Kaden? It's, it's not a fairy tale like the other ones. That's right. It's, it's not a fairy tale. Thing. Right. It's not a fairy tale. Good. This is information. What else is different? Look at the words on the page. What's different about the words on the page? Madison. Like they're like showing you different paragraphs how to be prepared and what are those called? What are they called, John Carter? Headings. Headings, that's a big one. Headings will usually be an informational text. So you will know exactly what you're about to you will know what you're about to read. Okay, kind of sums it. It's almost like a little title within the story. What's one other thing? It's on page 53. That's not. That's different. That's not in other stories. Seth. It doesn't show you how it does it. Right. What is that called? A diagram. A diagram. There are diagrams in informational text. These diagrams are usually a picture, they could be a chart or something, but it tells you how something works. We're going to look at that a little bit more when we read the story. Okay, will you get the light on? Alright, I'm going to read this out loud to you, and then we're going to vote on what text feature is present in this writing, okay? And then we're going to put it under the right part on our bulletin board. It's raining frogs. Small frogs rained on a town in Serbia, sending residents running for cover. There were thousands of them, a villager told a local newspaper. I thought maybe a plane carrying frogs had exploded in midair, said another resident. Had the town gone crazy? Probably not. What in the world happened? Scientists believe that water spouts and tornadoes can suck up the surfaces and lakes and marshes and other bodies of water. When they do, they can take frogs and fish along for the ride. The tornadoes can then drop them miles away. What text picture that we've talked about is in this little section right here? What text picture? Crazy. Okay, it is about tornadoes and well, it's about frogs raining, but tornadoes are mentioned. But remember, we talked about these four text features: headings, but well, we didn't really talk about pictures, diagrams, and are there highlighted words in this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Where are there highlighted words? Oh, nine. What's what text features in here? Probably headings. Headings. Alright, Crowley, come here. Take this and tack it up under headings on our text features board. That's already there. Alright, here's another one. Flaming twisters. As if tornadoes aren't dangerous enough, one kind is made of fire. Wildfires are so powerful they can create their own weather. As these fires burn, they consume huge quantities of oxygen. The intense oxygen heat, the intense heat causes the air to rise. When fresh air swoops in and replaces it, strong winds are produced. Sometimes the self-created weather, or micro-weather, causes swirling tornadoes of fire. These flame-throwing tornadoes, called fire whirls, can be 50 feet wide and grow as tall as a 40-story building. Okay, I know we didn't really talk about some of the text features. Put your hands down, Mike. Let's say we're going to vote on this one. Close your eyes. How many of you think this one's headings? Diagrams? Highlighted words? Pictures? Alright, open your eyes. It was pictures. Alright, Gracie. So we'll pack this one up in the pictures. And I'll, we'll talk about the difference in a picture and a diagram in just a second. Mystery waves. 
I imagine you're on an ocean liner when a wall of water ten stories tall races toward you like an unstoppable freight train. It's not a tsunami caused by an undersea earthquake. Tsunamis are tiny in the open ocean and become enormous and deadly as they approach the shore. We talked about the tsunami just a minute ago that happened in Japan. No, what you're witnessing at sea is a rogue wave, also called a freak wave. Scientists aren't sure what causes these waves, but they do know they can appear without any warning in the open sea, even in the clearest of weather. As recently as 15 years ago, these waves were thought to be a myth, but scientists now know they are very real and very dangerous to even the larger ships. Photographs. Photographs. Pictures. Highlighted words. Headings. Diagram. Good job, it's diagram. Amber, come hang this up. So what's the difference in a diagram and a picture? Someone tell me, raise their hand and tell me the difference that they've noticed between a diagram and a picture. John David. Well, the diagrams tell you how it happens, and the pictures can show you what it is. Okay, right. A picture usually is just a picture. It doesn't have any kind of... Um, anything describing really what's going on. But if you look at the diagram, it's showing you what a wavelength is. It's pointing to you, it's pointing out the crest to you, and it's pointing out the trough. It shows you things that a picture doesn't. And sometimes diagrams are drawn out. All right, the last one. The mother of all tornadoes. The fastest wind speed ever recorded 318 miles an hour occurred during a tornado near Oklahoma City in 1999. Scientists classify tornadoes by the damage they can do. A tornado with wind speeds of 70 miles an hour can, ease, can sweep away entire houses and hurl cars through the air like missiles. But a tornado with wind speeds of more than 300 miles an hour has the power to derail train cars tear grass from the ground, and even rip pavement from the street. Close your eyes. Highlight words. How do y'all know? All right, let's go. It's the last one in the Okay. Why are these words highlighted? Why are they highlighted? Hannah, why are these words They're important. You obviously need to know what a tornado is. If you don't know what the word hurl means, you might have some trouble understanding the power of the wind. And if you don't know what derail means, again, you won't understand the power of this tornado. Most of the time, if words are highlighted, there will be a definition in the glossary of your book, or there might be one at the bottom. Now, why do y'all's stories, even though they are fiction, why do they have highlighted words? Seth. There are vocabulary words. There are vocabulary words. When you're reading a chapter book or just an AR book, words aren't highlighted, are they? Okay. When you are doing, when you are reading an informational text, you will see highlighted words because they are important and you need to know them. All right. Okay. Open up under highlighted words. Okay. Now turn to page fifty in your small book, and we're going to listen to the story. We're going to listen to a world of change. And while we are reading, while we are reading, we're going to talk about a comprehension skill, which is something that will help you to understand what you're reading better. We'll talk about that a little bit while we're reading and then we're gonna talk about it more after we read. All right, everyone up on page 50. Genre, expository, a world of change. The Grand Canyon Skywalk, Arizona. That's where that picture is. Picture's one of our text features. 
All right, and our central question, how do people respond to natural disasters? We've talked about that a little bit when we talked about how um, your community, what your community can do. All right, we're on page 51. Earth may seem as if it is a large rock that never changes. Actually, our planet is in a constant state of change. Natural changes take place every day. These activities alter the surface of Earth. Some of these changes take place slowly over many years. Others happen in just minutes. Whether they are slow or fast, both kinds of changes have a great effect on our planet. Slow and steady. Some of Earth's biggest changes can't be seen. That is because they are happening very slowly. Weathering, erosion, and deposition are three natural processes that change the surface of the world. They do it one grain of sand at a time. Weathering occurs when rain, snow, sun, and wind break down rocks into smaller pieces. These tiny pieces of rock turn into soil but they are not carried away from the landform. Erosion occurs when weathered pieces of rock are carried away by a natural force such as a river. This causes landforms on Earth to get smaller. They may even completely collapse over time. The Grand Canyon is an example of the effect of erosion. It was carved over thousands of years by the Colorado River. After the process of erosion, Dirt and rocks are then dropped in a new location. This process is called deposition. Over time, a large collection of deposits may occur in one place. Deposition by water can build up a beach. Deposition by wind can create a substantial landform, such as a sand dune. What? We have to have a page up. It's slow and steady. What are the three natural processes that it talks about? Tristan? Uh, the, the first highlighted word. Okay, the highlighted words are your vocabulary words, and they are a text feature, but I want to know what this section, what were the three <coughs> natural processes it talked about? Done. Deposition. Weather, erosion, <coughs> and deposition. Now we have each one paragraph for each one. All right, well, I didn't really, when we were reading through that, I didn't really understand what erosion was. Since I didn't understand what erosion was, and I can see that there's a paragraph all about erosion, I'm going to go back and read that paragraph. Read it with me. Erosion occurs when, oh, no, sorry, you don't have to read it, but follow along. Erosion occurs when weathered pieces of rock are carried away by a natural force such as a river. This causes landforms on Earth to get smaller. They may even completely collapse over time. The Grand Canyon is an example of the effect of erosion. It was carved over thousands of years by the Colorado River. Okay, so this paragraph gives me an example, and I understand it a little bit better after I read it again, but I want to see what that Grand Canyon looks like so I can get a visual of, visual of it in my head. Whoa. This is the Grand Canyon. This is only part of the Grand Canyon. It's huge. This is the Colorado River that it talks about in the story, carving its way through. The Colorado River has eroded away all of this. What's that? Made it into the Grand Canyon. Eroded? Mm -hmm. Eroded away means that it, erosion took place. Like in our story, it says erosion occurs when weathered pieces of rock are carried away. When bits of rock and land are knocked away. Yes, Katie? Like when it, it slides down off like a mountain when it slides down from it? Yes, John Carter. Would it, it, is it still deep? What? The Colorado River. Oh, I, I would imagine in, in, there are places where it's very deep. 
Now the river wasn't this deep. The river wasn't this deep. Well, what happened was the land used to be up here. The land used to be even up there. And then over time, over millions of years, this river just weathered the land away and cut through it. Tristan. Because it's like that in that thing that you were talking about, the flat thing up there, because that one way it got hit by other rocks. And it might have. It went could down. have. It could have. Due to the river and the rocks were right there. Okay, let's look at page 52. Although erosion is a slow process, it still creates problems for people. Some types of erosion are dangerous. They can be seen as a hazard to communities. To help protect against beach erosion, people build structures that block ocean waves from the shore. They may also use heavy rocks to keep the land from eroding. Others grow plants along the shore. The roots of the plants help hold the soil and make it less likely to erode. Unfortunately, people cannot protect the land when fast natural processes occur. Fast and powerful. Fast natural processes, like slow processes, change the surface of earth. But fast processes are much more powerful. They are often called natural disasters because of the destruction they cause. Volcanic eruptions and landslides are just two examples. Volcanoes form around openings in Earth's crust. When pressure builds under Earth's surface, hot melted rock called magma is forced upwards. It flows up through the volcano and out through the opening. Eruptions can occur without warning. They have the potential to cause a crisis in a community. Alright, you want to see a picture of the volcano? Yes. That's a volcano erupting. Okay, turn off the other light switch. You can't see it. Okay, look in your look at this and then look in your book at page uh, 53 in the top corner. The diagram. It is real. The diagram at the top. During this eruption, where is the magma coming out of? Where is the magma traveling up to the top of the volcano? Just tell me. Pipe. The pipe. The pipe. The pipe, the pipe is carrying the magma to the what? The vent. The vent. The vent. You see how you can use diagrams to help you understand what's going on here. Because you can look at this and say, okay, yeah, the volcano is erupted. But the diagram cuts the volcano in half and draws it out so you can see what goes on inside. Okay, we get the, just that one mic. All right, we're on page uh, 50. Uh, we're on page 53. Like volcanic eruptions, landslides can happen without warning. They occur when rocks and dirt, loosened by heavy rains, slide down a hill or mountain. Some landslides are small. Others can be quite large and cause severe damage. Be prepared. In contrast to slow-moving processes, people cannot prevent...